know that how yeah. big the Inokea sticker. This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Four o'clock on Wednesday, everybody knows. It's, yeah. it's the flagship show for energy and the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And it's a little switch here. I, I normally just, uh, I, I stay on the side, but I'll be host today. And Maria Tomei, who is the ordinary co-host, is going to be the, my guest, I guess. Sure. We, we'll call you any name you <laughs> yeah, want. Okay, <laughs> sure, co-host guest. And, and what's valuable yeah. about this is that a week ago, just a week ago, uh, Maria yeah. and our other co-host for the show, Mitch Ewan, uh, were in Maui at the Maui, oops, Big Island, Big Island Big at Island. Nelha. Thank yes. you. Yeah. The Nelha Storage Conference. A couple of thoughts. First of all, good for Nel Nelha for setting it up. Oh, yeah. It's their middle name. They ought to do energy, and they ought to do storage. <laughs> they ought to do entrepreneurship, and they are. Yeah. You know, uh, with uh, uh, Greg Barber over there, they're doing a great job. I really admire how he sets this all up. And he got, I guess he got a crowd to come over. He got you to come over yeah, to yeah. talk about storage. And storage, obviously, for energy, for the grid, for the future, for 100% renewables by yeah. 2045, storage it's is critical. Important. It's a great subject. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you went. Yeah, and so you Mitch saw, and I were you talking last Dini week. Dini Vici. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I found it very interesting, and I learned a lot. I don't know that I conquered it. <laughs> but, okay. Why but, did uh, you go? Oh, well, we have to know what's going on in energy storage. As you explained, it's very important. You know, And not only that, it was a really impressive group of folks working in all sorts of areas related to the storage, the mini grids, the micro grids, um, you know, the technology, everything from the chemistry and the batteries to the bigger picture of, well, when you look at the regulatory questions, you know, mm -hmm. who pays and who, when does this get paid for and how does it all fit together in some future that, that suggests a first point to write down in your notes today, and that is when you talk about storage, you're really talking about everything. Because storage is in the middle of yeah. all of this, connected yeah. to everything else. Yeah. If you're trying to develop technology, or, you know, for a grid, for example, um, you don't have a battery or a storage system without without connection to everything else. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you know, and energy is connected to everything from telecommunications to healthcare to water, and so all those those interconnectedness as okay. well. Society, you know, important. It's very important stuff. Yeah. Now the question is. Um, what did they present over two days? So I thought, you know, maybe two days worth of rehashing what they had it's said a lot of would storage. be yeah. kind of, you know, excessive. So I pulled out some of the slides. I know last time we had mentioned a couple of things. Hey, there were a couple of slides on energy storage being more than batteries. Yeah. So I pulled out some of those slides. Why don't we go through them, Maria? Yeah. What do you okay. Think? So the first, the first one, slide number two. Um, I appreciated what one of the presenters and what I've done here is up at the top give the name of the presenter mm, so that nice. you know everybody who's so excited about this can go and actually see all the slides given by that's these presenters. That's a great idea though to give but, them credit. Yeah yeah, yeah so that it'll help you find them. The last slide that I have actually has the link to the website Good. that has the conference Good. presentation. So I thought this was interesting presentation of the variation in energy use, not only over the years, which was the point that Terry was making, but the first point on the left side is 2006, the amount of energy sold, and then over on the right, it goes out to 2017. It's a little bit covered by the logo, but you can take my word for it, it's 2017. And you can see that the amount of energy is, that's used in Hawaii every month varies by season. Right? So mm -hmm. when we're talking about energy storage, we need to think not only about the moment to moment variations in a solar system output or wind energy system, but also what about the seasonal storage, especially later on as we get less and less fossil fuel or liquid fuels in use and you have energy storage systems of other types. 
trying to pick up the seasonal difference. It's very interesting to see that it went down. It's probably half yeah. a dozen factors right, that went into right. that. And of course, the economy is, is part of it. And so I think, you know, we have a little bit of an uptick when the economy picks up yeah. steam as but well. What, but what I don't understand, maybe you can help me, maybe Terry Searles talked about this, is why it, it differs from month to month that way. Well, why, if you want to go back, month? well, let's look at what month yeah. is causing is, is the peak. So yeah. go back to slide two. So down on the <coughs> bottom, you can, oh, right there. Yeah, that's good. So you can kind of see that the middle of the year, around July, August, September, what happens at that time of year? It's hot, yeah, air Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah so yeah, the total, yeah. you know, it may not be when we have our absolute peak. That tends to happen in the winter in the evenings. But total energy use, not only do you have a lot of um, energy being used by air conditioners and whatnot, but you've also got July and August of 31 days. So anyway. I have to say this, but you can learn a lot from those seasonal yeah, changes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, when you look at what are your energy sources, you know, it's kind of if you have a lot, a lot of sun and a lot of heat, you know, that your solar can help to um, be used to. That's a valuable chart. For sure. But you've also got. But the trouble, the thing that is concerning to the folks who are trying to plan these systems is just that there is so much variability. You know, you had 100 to 150. You know, so percentage-wise, it, it's quite challenging. So yeah. that you know it, though, yeah. enables you to bring other equipment online. Or <clears> pricing <throat> signals, right? Yeah. 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 You know, if you and if everybody's using something at the same time, what usually happens to the price? It goes up. Yeah. So. So and you then can price what? that. You can price that chart flat. You can do that. Yeah. Well, that's a monthly thing, so it actually is even more variable. But right, if you had it not only month by month, but you know, hour by hour, <laughs> you know. So, so those are some of the interesting um, financial yeah. questions. Yeah. I wonder if that's going to come up in well, PBR. Oh, we're not, can't talk about. We're not going to. Can't, we're talk, never, about we're not gonna okay, talk about that. Okay, slide three. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about slide three. Oh, uh, so you know, we talked about season down at the bottom of this. This is a, a slide talking about once again energy storage technologies. So it's probably obvious that this is from somebody who's talking about the hydrogen as potential way to store energy, not just for hours or even days, but from season to season. So that was one of the points being made by this chart. Now, in the previous last week. I had said, hey, there were all these great charts that show it's not just batteries. And so this is one of those, I think I've got four of them that show it's not just batteries. So hydrogen storage, you know, if you can produce a liquid or a gas out of your excess electricity, uh -huh. you know, you, you may be able to store that and use it later. So is this, it. Is, this, is this supposed to reflect something that's happening now? Is this the distribution or rather the... No, we're not, not yet, but it's... So, it's uh, what is this? Pumped okay. hydro, so one pumped gigawatt. Hydro, okay. This, okay, this is not Hawaii, first of all. Na national. National. Yeah, international. You know, this is talking about the theoretical potential or, or the practical, I should say, the practical applications. So if you need one gigawatt of energy, of electricity, what are you going to use for... You know, batteries usually are not... Um, producing that, but pumped hydro is. We've mm -hmm. got many gigawatts of pumped mm -hmm. hydro available. Compressed air is something that people are interested in. Um, once again, this is more on the mainland. If you have old salt mines, I guess they're airtight because you can pump air into an old salt mine right. and get a lot of energy right. stored that way. Right. We don't have any old salt mines in Hawaii. No, but and our rock is so porous it would come out. Yeah, you know, but there are other folks talking about bladders under the ocean, but, you know, cost like anything else, you know, you do That'd your trade-offs and your cost effect. Well, but what what is it being compared to? Right. And do you have enough utilization of that for it to make sense? You know, so it, that's why it's on this chart. And then um, batteries are there and flywheels are there. Supercapacitors are, you know, they can, they can hold a lot for a little amount of time. Mm -hmm. Now, the next slide is very similar, except more colorful. So slide four talks about the different types of batteries. And then they're talking about your bulk storage is on the right once again. You know, you're talking about your pumped hydro, compressed air, energy storage, once again. This doesn't have hydrogen off on the right 
uh, the way the other one did. Obviously, everybody has their, their favorite technologies or the ones they're studying. You know? So when you get the folks who really understand the details of something, they try to show the context, but then they kind of focus in on theirs. And so you don't have yes, them presenting. Everybody's got its own everything. agenda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next slide is slide five. Once again, talks about hydrogen, but it points out that you can actually have um, hydrogen turned into liquids. So liquid organic hydrogen carrier is the LOHC. And ammonia is another hydrogen carrier. So um, this, is, this was the point of this fellow's so what is, presentation. What does storage uh, time mean? What does that mean? How uh, long? A, a well, that, will hold once a again, charge maybe, no. Or? If you need energy for, um, you know, a hundred more than just a day or a month, it's kind of like the days, weeks, months chart that was previous. Mm, okay. Yeah, and then he was, you know, trying to talk about the the cost, and of course those are all over the place. Um, and I have a chart later on that talks about um, you can't just look at the price of the battery itself. But so if you are interested in figuring out what technologies are being discussed for different sizes or applications, these, these charts are, are very helpful. And I think um, there's, there was one more, and I think that was Stan. Stan did the slide six. Mm -hmm. of as course. long as we're in the, yeah, yeah. So he, he's probably presented this. If not, we could ask him to, to explain. But once again, you've got the hydrogen and the methane, which um, and compressed natural gas compressed air, pumped hydro, as the long duration and high power. And then they talk about the flow batteries, which has got um, an electrolyte that doesn't just sit in the battery, it flows into the energy production um, device. Mm -hmm. So you can have more charged electrolyte um, depending on how much energy you need out of it. Notice how the biggest, biggest uh, shape on the page is, is hydrogen. But yeah, then, <laughs> it depends on your where are you focused, right? Sure. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but so let, me, I think, let me add a yeah. thought, though. Yeah. We started out with renewable energy, what, 15 years ago? No more than that, but uh, yes, okay. I mean, we're for okay. serious discussion. When the yeah. forum started 15 years ago, okay. uh, everybody said we need a diverse portfolio. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people still say that we have a diverse portfolio. But over time, a lot of the, a lot of the nominees in that portfolio have been stragglers and they have dropped out. Of the of the of, of the planning, <clears throat> so now you have clearly you have you have solar and you have wind. Okay? A lot of the others we don't have anymore. We don't yeah. think about it much. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, how about ocean okay. energy? Right, nothing. nothing. No, no, there is, nothing. there is. I mean, you've got your wave a, energy test, yeah, um, test. facility. Yeah, it's a 15 years. It's a test. Uh, yeah, it took. I, I don't. I don't think it really competes with the the ones who are you know, sort of emerging as the leaders, right? So I suggest to you, Maria, you have your that it's the same thing with storage. Right now ah, we have, yes, we have seven have. or eight things there. Yeah. And over time, you know, the capital is going to make its choice. The developers are going to make, the entrepreneurs are going to make their choice. Yeah. Utility companies are going to make their, you know, everybody's going to make a choice and there will be the same kind of emergence. So it's nice to have diversity in the possibilities for storage, but at the end of the day, yeah. it's going to narrow it down, don't you think? Uh, you know, I think there is enough difference between a one-second solution and a seasonal solution that you will still have a diversity. Okay, all right. Yeah, and, you know, people are always looking for the magic bullet. You know, and then there's the presenter who always says, there is no magic bullet, it's magic buckshot. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's just silver buckshot, magic I don't know. Buckshot. Whatever. Um, and then you have breakthroughs, you know, something you may have discounted as, ah, that's old, it's been developed as far as it can be, and then somebody figures out a new twist on it or combines things in a unique way or gets to understand what is the chemistry, what is the failure mechanism, well, you know, how can this actually be used in a different way, yeah. and all of a sudden you have a resurgence, which yeah. is why it's yeah. very and, and dynamic. And it may surpass the other ones. Yeah. If the technology is significantly yeah. better than we thought. You know, we used to just have something and say, well, it kind of does that, right? And then you find an application for it. And then when you're getting into the details, especially down at the nanoscale, and you're understanding what are the actual mechanisms, where are the waste, you know, where are the inefficiencies, how can, 
there are always breakthroughs. And I think that's what's so exciting about having the national labs show up at these conferences and share their and enthusiasm. They did, didn't yeah. They? yeah. Last time I, I didn't remember which national labs were yeah. there, so yeah, I should yeah. mention we had uh, NREL, we had the Department of Energy that's also, national, some folks, yeah. and the National Renewable Energy Lab. We had Sandia, and we had the Pacific Northwest National Lab, and Argonne. So all these folks were there. And then we had our local folks, the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, Natural Energy Lab of Hawaii. And then, of course, HCAT, you know, stand on. It's a very appropriate conference for right now. Oh, very yeah. appropriate yeah. attendees. Yeah, so, so anyway, so they were able to share not only their enthusiasm for their specific technology and the breakthroughs that are happening now and that they're looking forward in the next 10 or 20 years, but also they're aware of the bigger picture, which is also what you get when you come to these. Right, the possibility of conjoining technologies together or looking at one and learning something to be used exactly in the yeah. yeah so yeah. if they share a breakthrough here it might also apply to another another we're gonna have a breakthrough too a break uh, actually a break yeah breakthrough yeah there you go you'll okay. see maria tomei will be right back okay. <laughs> i only got through six slides cool this is good job tech Hawaii, raising yeah. public awareness <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solution. How to make a brighter day. What do we do? We've got to give a little love, have a little hope. Make this world a little better. Make it a better Try a little more, harder than before. Hey, aloha. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Okay, we had our breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. It's yeah. Maria Tomei, and she's uh, the, the co-host of Hawaii State of Energy, State of Clean Energy, and we're talking about the conference at Nelha over storage just a week ago. So you have more slides. I think you have more slides. Yes, okay. yes. So slide seven um, was one of the few that actually discussed the um, function of liquid fuels as actually stored energy. I mean, that's why they are so prevalent and so useful, is they are stored energy, and so we're familiar with it. So when we talk about the new energy storage systems, we usually don't even talk about liquid fuels, unless we're talking about liquids that include hydrogen and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was an interesting um, and valuable part of the discussion to at least acknowledge that liquid fuels are stored energy. And this slide pointed out that if you look at the batteries that are out there for energy storage, uh, I, mean, I think they also have pumped hydro and whatnot in there, it is four minutes of the U.S. energy need. Sometimes and, that'll do it for you. And oil reserves, of course, uh, 54 days. And I would just mention that um, one of the things that concerns me from a strategic point of view and a long-term point of view is if we're burning up our stored energy, um, we're not going to get that, that back. So it almost makes more sense to use what we have from renewable sources and just leave that other stuff in the ground. Climate change is, is a whole new dynamic on this. You don't want to take the carbon and put it into the atmosphere, but... See, that's a very interesting notion. But also... Just leave it there in reserve. You know, it, you'd probably never need it, but, well, maybe it's, it would be but what if your other things are not developed quickly enough to meet the demand? Why are you burning up your strategic... I, anyway, sorry. That's okay, no, I, <laughs> which is a different angle on the whole but, thing. But what you suggest here is that there needs to be a global view of this, of what we use first and how much of it. And how it works. And what we incentivize, you know, for electric vehicles, for example. Yeah, how it fits so together. So that we can manage it, you know. I mean, right. you can't let things happen by by faith. <laughs> Some, yeah, well, you have to be aware of the um, the realities of the market forces and you know the political forces and everything else that's happening. 
but you do need to also be intelligent in how you are working with those forces. It would be good to have a plan. And the invention. Yeah, you know, and there's also a force of invention, you yeah. know. Yeah. So right. you, you do need to be aware of you that. You have to modify yeah. the plan yeah. with the yeah. inventions because right. technology will always surprise you. Yeah. So one nice thing about this conference was not only the information, but the diversity of folks who presented. And not only that, we got press coverage. So on the Big Island, and you can see on slide number eight, these, um, the one session that the press showed up for and had a newspaper article on for the West Hawaii Today the next day was this one regarding Big Island, resiliency and force majeure oh, situations. Don't you think that would be the one Lava, that they had the hurricanes, they had, and so the press showed up and they took pictures and they wrote a good article, I think. Um, and so I, I really like it when there is public interest and media so interest what in say? what's happening. Well, they were, they were... What did he say? What did Jay Ignacio say? Oh, okay, so the next slide. Um, he talked about, of course, the lava. You know, this, this is a situation where not only do you have to worry about um, qu power quality and all this renewable energy conversion and all, but resilience of the system. So resilience was the big topic. Reliability, resilience, um, being able to react as quickly as possible to whatever nature throws at you or whatever happens. Storage is a key thing on that. It is a definite um, help. You know, if, yeah. if you have your system set up to have redundancies and to be able to handle um, the, short, the short term disruptions and to, as well as planning for the longer term ones, you know. So there was a lot of discussion of microgrids and their con contribution to resiliency. Um, they also talked about the wind events they had had, the hurricanes. You know, I mean, they, it wasn't even a hurricane when it hit. Um, in 2014, it was a tropical storm, but it knocked down the trees and took out a bunch of poles. It wasn't that it knocked down the poles directly, it knocked the trees onto the poles, you know, the Albizia. And so there are so many things to um, look at when you're building a resilient system. And there was a lot of discussion at this conference about Puerto Rico, rebuilding Puerto Rico's grid to be more resistant to disasters, more resilient, you know, as long as you gotta rebuild everything, can you do it? in a better way. So they actually had many presentations on how the grid failed as well as how it was going to be built back. And hmm. What part storage would play in, in I'm very ways. interested in that. I'm actually moderating a panel for EUCI. Remember them? Yeah, They yeah, have their yeah. annual conference in Waikiki. And the panel is, uh, is on hardening. Hardening the system, being more resilient. Yeah, which is part of which is part of what you got to do. Due regard for what happened in Puerto Rico, of yeah, course. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, let me. Let, I'll go back and check which of these presentations <laughs> had a bunch on Puerto Rico, and if you yeah, want to take yeah, a look yeah, at yeah. them, there were some very good points, very some very good questions, we some should, unanswered should, questions. Yeah, we have to learn. It's like if if there's a plane crash, the FAA comes out and they have inspectors and um, you know investigators mm -hmm. and. And they decide, they inquire into what happened. So why? Other planes can learn. Other airlines, other pilots, other yeah. planes can learn. So every time there is a storm, there will be storms. Yeah. Yeah. We should be learning a lot about how to minimize the effect of the next storm. Yeah. That's the because world we live in. if there is a success story there somewhere, maybe that can be replicated right. and expanded as right. well. In the case of Puerto Rico, we did a show on this with a, um, with a I guess he was an energy expert in Washington, D.C., who was studying what happened in Puerto Rico, and he had photos of these large, they have large solar farms in Puerto Rico. They're not yeah, just behind yeah, the curve. Right? they serious solar farms. It goes on for acres and acres. And um, one installer did one side of this particular farm, used a certain kind of fastener and fastening technique, and the other side, the different, maybe a different installer, a different, you know, methodology, and after the storm, this side was destroyed, completely pulled up. Yeah. This side was still functioning. Yep. So you learn from that yeah. next time you build a, a solar farm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, the, um, I was any, very glad to see the level of interest and the media coverage of, of that, at least that part Great. of the important. conference. Yeah. Another uh, important point is how... Not only is storage important to Hawaii, but Hawaii is doing some things that are very helpful in the storage area. So the next slide, I just wanted to illustrate slide 10. 
um, Hawaii Natural Energy Institute is very involved in this and they are doing everything from collecting the data to doing a lot of modeling and analysis and testing and they are applying some of these tools to Hawaii's questions. And so I know we had some HNEI presentations, and I yeah, hope we have Yeah, he's been on the show more. a number of times, yeah. Matthew Dubarry. Yeah. Recently, um, in Yeah, fact. and others at HNEI as well. I just, you know, took this as part, you know, this was part of one very busy slide, <laughs> but I think it illustrates that they are doing a, a variety of things. So it's, uh, it does go both ways, which is why it's so interesting for us here. Well, you can't wait for a storm to hit to do the research. Yeah. No, well, no. <laughs> you, can't, you can't wait for a problem to do it. You have to do it in advance. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and the best place is in the laboratory. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah, it's better than having to wait until the storm hits. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. So, so slide 11 um, kind of gets into some of the level of detail they were going into about different types of batteries. I know you, you know, we're finally getting to the battery discussion, right? I've only got a couple slides on batteries, but you can see that the energy storage deployments, um, lithium ion, like every, you know, in all the other sectors as well is really taking over. You know, you've got a lot of the vehicles using lithium ion and as your small portable electronics as well, and it's also being used for some of your large-scale energy well, storage. You know, you know, lithium ion is certainly the top of the line right now, expensive, um, and there's only so much lithium in the world. But I read, since this conference happened last week in, yeah. uh, in the Big Island, I read that there was another kind of battery oh, there are. That, that somebody came up with, which is cheaper, which holds the charge, uh, which I think it's bigger, you know, in terms of the volume of the battery, but that may not matter that much because batteries collectively don't well, take that much yeah, space. Yeah, for storage, it's not as critical as for cars yeah. and for Anyway, cell I mean, I, I don't think we can rule out the possibility no. that battery technology is, is moving forward even as we speak, and that lithium iron is not the end of the road, and there will be batteries that will be cheaper and better, more manageable as time goes on. So it's, a, it's a technology to watch for. And I think we'll hear more about that. Yeah. I think so. And there will be many conferences in which they present yeah. you know, a lot of yeah. the work that's being done there. Yeah. The, um, the next one does mention a couple more types of batteries. Slide 12. You know, so the, the flow batteries, um, probably not the one you, you heard about, although maybe it was, you know, um, sodium metal and lead acid, of course. And there are a variety of these um, technologies that aren't even shown here. I think you've probably got hundreds of potential technologies. That are under it's interesting. Some but of them are significantly different... hold. A, um, they hold. A, they have a greater duration by, oh gee, twice as much. And that and is this something. is really and so the reason I included this. Oops, sorry. Um, is not so much for the information at the top part, but the bottom, because if you want to see the energy, there's a website you can go and get your energy storage database fix because there's a lot of energy storage projects that are being I know I know built. this question is going to surprise you Maria uh -oh. but what is the website you're talking about Oh it was on the slide Okay yeah the previous well, one so just can if we you're go watching back to that this so just people can write hit down the pause hit pause and um, it's energy, energy storage, storage exchange. Exchange yeah. Yeah. Okay thank you Okay <laughs> So I've got one more one more graph and then we get to just the list of presentations okay. right So the point of this was, okay, you're excited. Let's say you have a favorite battery technology and you figure it's perfect. What is the price? Well, if you go and say, how much can I buy the battery for? They're going to give you the number that's the orange one there is just the DC direct current system cost, right? So you got to be careful with how you ask the question and how you answer the question because it's more than just the cost of the battery. You also have the power electronics and you also have, you got to build it. Sometimes you have to build a building around it. Sometimes you need to air condition the building around it, right? Yeah, yeah. And you have to integrate it into whatever system it is that it's supposed to be supporting, right. whether it's a building. changes or, too. Exactly. Yeah. And there's programming in it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know so, you, you know, that's like got to change. It will change. Yep. The, the way to do the, ba the, the building, the way to do the electronics, it's all going to change, and probably it'll come down in price. Probably. Yeah. 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 This is a great conference. It was. It was a lot of fun. To think about these things, you know, to, to look out yeah. into the future, to, 
to feel the limits and how they move and uh, and to see new possibilities you know you're right that it, it should be a collaborative kind of conference where people come in from various sides to see how this affects them even though they're not directly involved in batteries and storage yeah yeah, yeah. and the networking and the connections that that can be made um, sure. between the it's worth the price of eggs right there yeah yeah so, so I had one more slide mm -hmm. okay um, don't want to miss the slide uh, 14. So I just wanted to um, give a slide. shout. It is. You know, <laughs> what I love about the way they present it, it's so clear. It's so easy to find. If you're looking for a specific presenter or whatnot, you can come right here, click on it, and find yeah. it. It's in order, it it's the order of presentation. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And it's got the name and the time and the presentation and whatnot. And so it's just so easy yeah. to navigate. Yeah, that's you great. Know? Simplicity. Yeah, overall. well organized, yeah. and it's free. You know, you can go and see what they what they presented. A lot of these folks are actually very accommodating. If you're researching something or you have a question about applications, they're really they're very accommodating. I think um, many of them to engage with the researcher or the journalist yeah. or. Or whoever well, what comes around goes around. You know, we yeah. might as well learn from each other. Yeah, it pays to be um, to exchange information. Yeah. yeah, and and of course you have to draw the line where you're going to reveal your patent. Yeah, or some kind you're of. You're not going to write the paper for the student. Right. You are not. Right. Right. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad you went. So am I. It was a lot oh, of fun. I, I wish I was there, but I think there'll be more. There will. I noticed that this conference in Nelha was. Uh, the second one in two years. Right. There was another one two years ago. Yeah. So uh, a, a shout out to Greg Barber. Good for you, Greg, for putting it together. And maybe next time you could do it annually. What do you think, Maria? Would you agree with that? <laughs> There's probably going to be a lot of stuff happening between now and a year from now. So I would love to go. Of yeah. course, putting them on is a lot of work. So um, whenever you have the next one, hopefully we'll be there. Yeah. Energy is technology. Technology is energy. The two are inextricably intertwined. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. Great to talk to you. And thank you. Aloha.